You can have anything you want in this life, and all that is expected of you is that you give back a relatively small percentage. Tithing is the single most important thing you can do to guarantee your success. Tithing means giving 10% of your gross income back to God. Before anyone else is paid, you owe the universe 10%. This is not a bill. This is not something you can negotiate or postpone. 10% of your income does not belong to you. It is given to you in trust and you get to decide where it goes. But you do not get to decide if it goes. The tithe is God's money. One story demonstrating why we give 10% goes like this. The 1, 1, represents male energy, and the 0, 0, represents female energy or the field of infinite possibility ties. Since life in this world is dependent upon both male and female energy, we are employing the basic elements of creation by using the number 10 as our tithe. 10 is the exact numerical representation of creation. You can think of it as the male, 1, impregnating the female, 0. So the universe can give birth to those things you wrote down, your desires. Marilyn calls this cosmic fertilization. By paying your 10% tithe, you are guaranteeing delivery of what you want. See the diagram below. As with all things in this life, you do have a choice. You can choose not to pay God his portion. There are, however, consequences for this action. God will take his poor tea on anyway. Remember the money is not yours to keep. You may get fewer bargains when shopping. You may have to pay full price for everything. You may experience loss in one form or another. You may be the one pulled over for a ticket even though everyone on the road is speeding. You may have your house broken into and robbed. You or your life partner may get sick on vacation. A misunderstanding may strain your love relationship. Your tire could blow out at 60 miles per hour. It could cost you a chrome wheel, a fender, a headlight or even prevent you from reaching the meeting where you were going to make a big commission or meet the man of your dreams. The problem with not paying the universe is that the universe takes its portion anyway. Often you end up paying more while supporting the dark side of life. But it's your choice. You decide. By tithing to the good spiritual work of creation, you are guaranteeing that you will succeed. First, your 90% goes farther. You find bargains. You pay less for the things you do buy. The thief who was casing your house is fright end away. A tow truck pulls in front of you, slowing you down and foiling the radar cop you never saw. You and your partner are so healthy you get a reduced rating on your insurance premium. A potential problem in your love relationship disappears because you remember to bring home flowers. You may do your checkbook at the end of the month and find an extra $200 or $300. It sounds I am possible, but this has happened to us. We subtracted prop early. The bank said no mistake was made and we had more money. There is so much money in the world. It has to go somewhere. When you tithe, your money goes further and success seeks you out. That new job, that business opportunity or that new friend you want to meet suddenly shows up in your life. Good things happen to those who tithe. Tithing also protects you financially, emotionally, spiritually and physically. The slings and arrows of Altred Gia's fortune seem to bounce off before they get to you. You are surrounded by the protecting white light of God. You meet people who help you unravel difficulties and resolve your afflictions. You become stronger, dependent only upon God. Your life is enriched in every aspect. God takes care of his best customers. Look at the You Pay Anyway diagram on page 100. Above all things is the one and only power of the universe. This power can be either plus, plus, or minus, positive or negative, like two poles on a battery. In our diagram, the left side represents the positive. The right side represents the negative. Positive qualities of this world are listed on the left while negative qualities are listed on the right. At the bottom of this diagram is 10% of your income. When you tithe, your money supports the positive qualities on the left. When you do not tithe, 
the power of the universe takes the money from you to support the negative qualities on the right. You pay anyway. Fail to tithe, and you invite loss, pain, failure and heartache into your life. Pay God his 10%, and you open the door to profit, happiness, health, joy, success and love. By tithing you are allowing yourself to receive the benefit of all the good the universe has for you. CAUTION! Where you tithe can be as important as tithing itself. Send your tithe where you feel you receive spiritual guidance, and the effectiveness of your tithe increases. If you do not feel a spiritual connection where you tithe, you are not receiving all the good you are due. Tithing is for your benefit. And let there be no mistake, tithing works. As long as your intent is to pay God that which is rightfully His, then your tithing is acceptable. You are fulfilling your obligation. But if you are not at the same time supporting the source of your own spiritual growth, you might not be getting the greatest personal benefit. You came into this world to grow closer to God. To gain the qualities and attributes that allow you to make spiritual progress. You are here to learn and grow. You are not here to make spiritual progress for others. They must do that for themselves. Create in yourself a pure heart, and you will help humankind in the process. You do not need to belong to a church, a synagogue, a mosque or any organized religion to tithe. In fact, the idea is to support the good spiritual work of the universe. So, contrary to what anyone else might say, you do not need to send your tithe to an institution of any kind. It may not be tax deductible, but that's not the point. It's not your money in the first place. Your tithe is God's money. Send God's money where you feel it will promote the good spiritual work of the universe. In addition, if your tithe supports the source of your own spiritual growth, enlightenment, inspiration and help, so much the better. The important thing to remember is you can send your tithe to anyone. This can be an individual. It can be an organization. It can be a group of individuals or an institution. It can be anywhere you feel your tithe both promotes the good spiritual work of the universe and helps with your own spiritual progress. Certainly you may tithe to a religious organization. I just want to make it clear this is not your only option. In fact, if you send your tithe to a religious organization from which you no longer receive spiritual inspiration or support, you are not supporting your current spiritual growth. It would be like paying money to one grocery store, but taking your groceries from the store across the street. Where you tithe is your responsibility. God wants you to decide who you feel is doing the good spiritual work of the universe and support them. If you are not sure where to send your tithe, ask God to make it crystal clear to you. You will receive direction. At first we didn't know where we wanted to tithe either. In the beginning, we gave much of our tithing to Marilyn. She was our teacher. Then we were given new teachers and we were active in a spiritual organization. So we developed a list. Every two weeks when our check came in we would write out a tithing list. It was a wonderful experience. Together, Diane and I would make a list of all the individuals and groups we felt we should tithe to for that particular check. Then we would divide our tithing among that list. Diane cut the checks and I signed them so we would both have a part in the paying of the tithe. We always gave thanks for the opportunity to tithe and bless the funds before we sent them out. Tithing always made payday a spiritually uplifting event. Sure it's great to get paid. But by paying our tithe, the day was lifted to a higher, brighter level. At first, my son had a particularly difficult time knowing where to tithe. His friends told him that giving away his money was completely stupid, which wasn't all that helpful. And Alex is a musician and not involved in a spiritual organization of any kind. So the question he asked me was the number one question people always ask, where should I send my tithe? I told him what I tell everyone else. You get to decide what you eat for dinner. You get to decide who your friends are. You absolutely get to decide for yourself where you send your tithe. Send it where you feel it should go. Not where you think, but where you feel it should go. Follow your feelings. The universe directs you through your heart. Open your heart to God, 
and you will know where to send your tithe. Write down. I now know with crystal clarity where to send my tithe. Your tithe must, however, go to a spiritual source. Sending your money to the local zoo, for example, is not really supporting God's work. Unless, of course, you believe that the zoo promotes the good spiritual work of the universe. Tithing is all about your spiritual growth. Giving to good causes is an excellent thing to do, but it is not tithing. It's charity. Tithing is giving back the tenth portion of everything the universe gives you. God makes it very clear to you through your feelings where he wants his money to go. Alex sent his first check to one particular recording artist. My son felt like he received spiritual enlightenment from this individual's music, so that's where his check went. It took several weeks for them to cash the check. They probably didn't know how to enter it on the books. The point here is that Alex's intent was to pay his tithe. How your tithe is received is not your concern. It is more important that you send your tithe where you feel it should go. That spiritual connection you get wherever you decide to tithe is worth its weight in gold. I sent a tithe to a friend who was building a basketball court in Guatemala for young men to whom my friend was teaching these very principles. I was touched by his work and sent my tithe there one month. That's the great thing about a tithe. You can send it one place this month and another next. Tithing is fun. Since the amount, 10%, is predetermined, it is never a question of how much you send, but only where you send it. My wife and I look forward to writing these checks more than any of the checks we write. We thank God and bless the recipient of every tithing check we write. For us, this in itself is an uplifting and inspirational experience. Okay, I hear some of you saying, how can I give 10% of my money back to God when I don't have any now? That's why I bought this book. This is exactly the react on my wife and I had when Marilyn told us we had to tithe if we wanted to stay successful and keep getting the things we asked for. I grew up in a Lutheran church, and I remember all the rich people who would talk about tithing at the annual church budget meeting. I guess I figured you had to be rich to tithe. My parents gave money every Sunday, but they never tithed. They thought they were doing all they could do. They never did grow rich. Like most people, I had it backward. You don't tithe AF tear you get rich. The secret is that you tithe and then you get rich. Give to God out of love. He has loved you enough to give you everything you have. Give back to creation in the same spirit. The universe wants you to be rich, so you should expect to receive what you ask for. Keep in mind that your list is a list of preferences and the universe has the final decision. God acts as your agent. He gets you work, cars, relationships, and you pay 10% to the goodness of eternal truth. You are not investing to make money, you are paying back money that never belonged to you to begin with. When you tithe, you sacrifice a small portion of your wealth and in so doing protect and bless all that you have. You can think of tithing as a material prayer, as the best insurance available anywhere. In ancient times, you would have sacrificed a lamb or a calf. Today, you write a check or give cash. Either way, 10% of everything you receive belongs to the good force of creation. Write those checks first and enjoy the experience. Tithing, as with all universal laws, is for your benefit. Open your heart and let the good come in. Oh, another thing. Be careful of automatic withdrawal. The idea of tithing is that you are making the decision to give. It is usually better to write the check yourself every month. You are doing this out of love. Stay actively and personally involved with your tithing. How then do you start tithing when you aren't making it now? In the beginning both my wife and I were uncomfortable with giving 10% of our earnings away before we paid bills. Frankly, we weren't sure it would work. If we gave away the 10% we already had allocated to other needs, we would be going in the hole. We'd been struggling for many years. We didn't have decent furniture, or pots and pans, dishes or even a good bed. These things had all worn out. We needed dental work, and our kids were now in college and they needed help. We needed every penny of our income and then some. 
give 10% away? How? What is important is your intent. God knows your situation better than you do. Start by giving what you can. At first, we tithe less than 10% of our income. Gradually, over the months, we raised this amount until it reached 10% of our gross income. God allowed us to grow financially in those months, and we continued to raise the percentage. Again, the important thing is your intent. If you intend to give 10% and you work toward that end, God will reward you. If however, you start by giving less but never get up to the 10%, then your good will suffer. The bottom line is that tithing is an opportunity for you to demonstrate that you understand you are not the reason for your success. Your tithe says, the universe gives me everything I have. That means down to the shirt on my back and the last can of Texas chili in the cupboard. The minute you start thinking otherwise is the minute you invite trouble into your life. You ask. And you receive. That's it. Everything else is up to God. Oh, you might work long, hard hours. You might be praised as the most brilliant, skilled, creative mastermind on the planet, but you are not the cause of your success. God is. Go ahead and enjoy that praise. Just remember you don't do the real work of your success. The universe gives you everything you have. Even the work you do is yours because the universe allows you to have it. And tithing is your demonstration that you understand that fact. Tithing is your key to unlimited success. Now if you don't agree, by all means test it. Try tithing for a few months and watch your wealth increase. Then stop. Watch how your finances decrease. Watch the money move away from you instead of toward you. This is the only universal law you can test. It's like Mark Twain said, when a man wants to carry the cat home by the tail, I say let him. That cat will teach him a thousand lessons I could never explain. Tithing is the single most important thing you can do to guarantee your success. You pay anyway. Give 10% of everything you receive back to God and you will prosper. It's a universal law. Tithe where you receive spiritual growth and your success is guaranteed. Do this one thing and you will assuredly grow rich beyond your wildest dreams. Chapter 15. Your Success Covenant. Open your 79 cent notebook to the blank page you left at the very front. We are now going to write your success covenant. Turn to the page directly across from the inside cover where you wrote, all this by divine right, divine inspiration, divine intervention, divine timing and with good for all concern. The success covenant begins your list of preferences. Normally, you write your success covenant and then write your list. We did it in reverse or dur for learning purposes. The success covenant is perhaps the most important entry in your book. You are making a contract with your boss, your agent, your manager, your client, the source of all your good. You are going to agree on the terms of your success. On this page, write the following words, exactly, unless you want to change God to read great spirit, universe, force, creation, etc. Success Covenant. Dear God, Universe, Creative Force. Thou art my master planner and partner. Of all that thou shalt give me, I shall surely give the tenth unto thee. God, Universe, Creative Force, is my agent, my employer, my manager, my client, my boss and the source of all my supply. Sign your name and date the agreement. There is a good reason to write your list immediately following your success covenant. You are making a contract. You are telling the universe that you will give back 10% of everything you receive. In return, you want the things on your list. Cause in effect. You pay and you receive. It is that simple. This whole process of tithing and receiving is, once again, very much like a trip to the grocery store. You make out a list of the groceries you want and you send someone, your agent, to the store in your place. Naturally, you give that person money to buy the things on your list. The grocery store is not about to let anyone have the groceries until they are paid for. You do not get something for nothing in this world. By the same token, 
You do not expect your agent to hand the clerk money and leave without your groceries. You pay money and you get what you want. Tithing is the same way. God is your agent and you agree to pay him a set percentage of your income. In return, he gives you the things you want. Yes, you have to pay 10%. But you can ask for absolutely anything. Your success covenant is your contract with the Creator. It makes clear exactly what you owe, and it spells out exactly what you want to make you rich beyond your wildest dreams. Chapter 16 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Giving is the key to receiving. If there is only one thing you get from this book, let it be this. Let me repeat that for you. Giving is the key to receiving. This is so very important. I cannot overstate this golden bit of wisdom. If you do not write anything else down, if you think all the rest is hogwash, if you think you'd rather put your nose to the grindstone than follow the suggestions in this book, fine. Just do yourself one favor, give. Follow this one piece of advice from this day forward, and success will come to you in abundance. Creating a cash flow is nothing more than increasing the income you receive on a regular basis. With this system of gaining wealth, that is very easy to do. Simply give more and you will receive more. Certainly, tithing is giving. It is your gift of thanks to God. Tithing, however, is more like a commission you owe regardless of whatever else you do. Tithing gets you into the school of success. Giving freely to others, on the other hand, sets you at the head of the class. Giving money and resources away out of love and kindness is a very powerful thing. It is precisely how the universe functions. God gives you everything. He gives out love and kindness. How could he not reward you for doing the same thing? When you give freely to others, you activate the law of tenfold return. It is like seed corn. The corn farmers used to save from their harvest to grow next year's crop. You plant one kernel back in the ground and get a manifold increase. This law is set down in every major religion in the history of mankind. It means that when you give one dollar freely to someone else, the universe rewards you by returning to you at least ten dollars. You give one dollar, you get back ten dollars. You give five dollars, you get back fifty dollars. You give one hundred dollars, you get back one thousand dollars. Give one million dollars, get ten million dollars. There's no limit because you cannot outgive the universe. What happens is that your giving creates a vacuum which the universe must fill. Isn't that one of the things you learn in high school physics? Nature hates a vacuum. Your GIVing creates a hole that must be filled. This is not some form of idealism. This is a law of the universe. You give money, you get money back, multiplied ten times. Period. It always works. Drop a pencil and it falls to the ground because of the law of gravity. Give money away and you get money back because of the law of tenfold return. Not to rally, the time and method for returning this tenfold payment is up to the forces of creation. You will, however, usually see a rather quick turnaround. Which makes this a fantastic way of generating income. All you have to do to get it is to claim it. Give freely and claim your reward. Marilyn told me a story about giving in Las Vegas. She used to host bus tours for seniors going from Orange County to the action and excitement of Las Vegas. On one such trip, Marilyn overheard a woman say that she wished she had some more money to play, so Marilyn gave the woman $10. The woman was one of the folks on the bus tour and didn't want to take the money. Marilyn told her she could not refuse her gift. That, of course, would hurt Marilyn as well. The woman did take the money. Marilyn turned around and put a quarter in a slot machine. She won $100, exactly a tenfold return. Then, she scooped up the quarters and took them home in her purse because she didn't know the casino would cash them in for dollars, but that's another story. The point is that by giving the $10 away, she created a vacuum which the universe immediately filled with a tenfold return. You are undoubtedly giving already. Every time you eat in a restaurant and leave a tip for the server you are giving. 
the standard tip is somewhere between 15% and 20%. My guess is that you are not claiming this gift. I wasn't. I didn't even think about it. I considered the tip part of the cost of having dinner. It is not. You are giving. If you pay $30 for dinner and you leave a $5 tip, claim it. Pay the bill. Walk outside so no one thinks you have lost your marbles and say out loud, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, for the $50 tenfold return. It is not just a good idea, it is the law. The law of tenfold return. For every good we give, we receive a minimum tenfold return. For every hour of comfort and love we extend to a friend, we get 10 hours of love in return. Maybe not from that same person. Maybe we get our 10 hours from someone else. All our good comes from God, remember. He determines when, where and how we receive. The only thing that matters is that we give so that we can receive. The next time you find yourself low on funds, give something away. Give money to a homeless person. Give money to a friend for no reason. Tell them you want to increase your cash flow. Give money to a school activity. Pay your gardener more than you owe. Tell him thanks. Leave a few dollars in the tip jar the next time you get a bagel or coffee. The money will pour in. You have created a vac UUM which the universe must fill. Clean out your closet and give the clothes you do not wear to a charity or someone who can use them. Before you know it, that void in your closet will be filled with brand new clothes. I gave away an old computer to a friend, and within a few weeks I had more than enough cash to buy a bigger, faster one. Giving generates income. Sometimes the value you receive in return is beyond dollars and cents. I never will forget one Christmas I spent in a hotel in Phoenix, Arizona. Our family and Diane's sister's family were attending a conference as an excuse to meet halfway and enjoy the holidays. I was always missing the lectures, usually for a very good reason, like watching the Lakers play the Phoenix Suns. Well, after the game, I left my room and headed across the street to another hotel where most of the formal meetings were held. It was cold. The wind was blowing and I saw two men, both haggard and dirty, walking toward me. They walked past several people from the conference, but those folks were in a hurry to get inside where it was warm and they paid no attention to these two needy men. Soon we were face to face. They were gaunt, and their faces were marked with deep lines. They had very little hope in their eyes. It was obvious to me their lives were much harder than my own. They asked if I could spare a few cents. I was there on borrowed money myself. My life was less than prosperous, and I had long ago resolved not to give money to the homeless. Heck, they would probably just buy alcohol anyway. So I had my head down and I, too, was ignoring these two men. Then, I do not really know why. Maybe I figured a bottle of cheap wine would be better than nothing on a night like this. Maybe love for the human family grabbed me. I do not know why. But I stopped turned around and called to the men who I had already passed. I gave them a couple of dollars, not much. It was the light in their eyes that I remember. They had hope. They smiled great toothless smiles and thanked me, profusely, for my gift. They said that my gift gave them just enough for a room for the night with a bowl of soup. They were serious. They blessed me and wished me a Merry Christmas as they hurried off. I stood there with tears in my eyes, thanking God that their plight was not mine and that for the first time in years I had done the right thing. Those other folks who had ignored these men missed out on quite a reward. Oh, by the way, someone bought our dinner that night. Something I hadn't counted on. It kept me from running out of money on that trip. Marilyn has a great rule of thumb for giving to the needy. You never know, she says, that one of the poor and hopeless people you run into isn't an angel sent to test you. I like to think that the poor in our midst are our trust from God. This, too, is supported by holy writings, but there is one rule of thumb we can all follow. When in doubt, give. It only makes you richer. A few months ago, my oldest daughter, Penelope, went to the post office to mail a few letters. 
there is a dirty and tattered man who usually sits by the front door. He never asks for money, and most people never even see him. He's part of the landscaping, I guess, like a broken birdbath. As everyone else had, Penelope walked past this man on her way in. Suddenly, she realized that he wasn't asking for money. Why was he there every day? Certainly there were more exciting or more comfortable places to sit. On her way out she stopped and looked at the man and said, God bless you, man. As he looked at her through his sad, painful eyes, a smile of relief came to his face. Thank you, he said. You'll never know how much that means. We have not seen that man at the post office since. Give and you will be rich beyond your wildest dreams. Give and you will receive at least a tenfold return. Sometimes the return is priceless. My wife has given $35 every year to a Shakespeare F.E.'s Tybal in L.A., even when we didn't really have it, because she wanted to. The production raises food for the home less and gives at-risk kids in gang areas a chance to see the beauty and the mastery of a professional Shakespearean production. Now, I think we give $100, but the point is we have received inestimable returns on that gift. Every year we celebrate our wedding anniversary with front row seats for a superior Shakespearean production. We usually take 10 or 15 friends, eat a picnic and enjoy a great evening under the stars. How do you value that return? In LA that kind of seating could easily cost $200 each. We and our guests are treated like royalty. We help the homeless by bringing canned food and give thousands a chance to watch a play written nearly 400 years ago by one of the greatest masters of all time. They watch for free. We get to be royalty. What a deal. Remember to give, then claim your return. Leave a $5 tip and say, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, for the $50 tenfold return. Give a friend who's having trouble $20 and say, thank you, thank you, thank you, for the $200 tenfold return. Drop a couple of quarters in one of the charity boxes in the grocery store and say, thank you, thank you, thank you, for the $5 tenfold return. Always say, thank you, three times, there's power in it. Once you start giving and claiming your reward, the money will begin to come to you. Tithe on that money and more money will come. Give away more money and even more money will come to you. If you go to lunch with someone, buy their lunch. Then claim your tenfold return. If their lunch costs $10 and you leave a $3 tip, say, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, for the $130 tenfold return. Next week your friend might buy your lunch. If he offers, accept. Tell him to claim the reward. Giving becomes addicting. You'll feel great about the act of giving, and you'll see more money coming to you. Oh, one more thing. Money coming to you can also mean not spending as much. Once you start tithing and giving freely, you'll see a wonderful result. You'll find things do not cost as much for you. The things you want may be on sale. Or someone gives you exactly what you need before you even know you need it. Marilyn gave me a copy machine worth about $1,000. I didn't need one at the time, but I am not about to refuse a gift. That stops your good from coming. Later I needed a copy machine. I had it for free. Marilyn got to claim a $10,000 tenfold return for giving me the copier. This was a good deal for both of us. Giving is a win-win scenario. The giver wins a tenfold reward. And the recipient wins a gift. The more we give, the more we receive. So give freely and claim, out loud, your tenfold return. You will, absolutely, grow rich beyond your wildest dreams. Chapter 17. Having fun. You have written down what you want to have. You have tithed on your income. And you give freely to your fellow humans. Now what? What is next? What else do you do to ensure the acquisition of all you have asked for? The answer is perhaps shocking, have fun. Part of this system is to enjoy what you do have. 
War Rying only produces negative results. Whatever you worry about, you create. Not a good direction to go. The oppo side of worry and concern is a carefree confidence in SU success. Believe in your own success. Have fun. Enjoy yourself. God has given us a world of fun things like the beach, Disneyland, movies, skiing, cruises, fishing, hiking, camping, baseball games, football games, ping pong, croquet, plays, concerts, card games, computer games and, of course, my personal favorite, basketball. Everything that is fun for fun's sake. Get out and do things. All work and no play makes you dull and boring. This concept carries over to your work. Find the things in your work that give you pleasure. Most people are attracted to a particular kind of work because they enjoy a certain part of it. Then the politics of the workplace take over and, zap, you end up doing things you hate. This is not beneficial to your success. Sure, you may have to continue to do things that are not exactly what you want to do, but you can probably focus on the things you want to do. If not, if everything about your work is distasteful, maybe you had better take out your 79 cent wide ruled spiral notebook and ask for a new job. The universe will grant your request. Write down the circumstances surrounding the situation you want to have. If you want to be an artist, write down the things you have in your job. Flexibility, security, time off, fun people, creativity. Write down that you use your artistic abilities, that these abilities are appreciated, that your work is fulfilling, and that you have a large, steady, dependable income. Your new job will find you or the old job will improve. We work better and we are more productive when we are happy and having fun. Maybe you need to take some time off and go have fun. We do. Every once in a while, we will close the office and take the whole staff to a special outing. The first time we did this we all went to Disneyland. It was a great success. It gave us a chance to detach ourselves from the work in the office. We stopped thinking about all the problems we needed to handle all the reports that needed writing and all the calls that needed to be returned. We had fun and let the universe do its work without our interference. We turned our back on the business, so the business could come to us. Have fun, it pays. A few years ago I met a man in Las Cruces, New Mex ICO, who said something about enjoying your work which touched my heart. When I met this man he was 74 years old wealthy and still actively selling very expensive fire alarms through dinner parties. He would go to a town and get someone to invite all his friends to a steak dinner at the local steakhouse. He bought you a steak dinner and all you had to do was watch a 20-minute presentation on fire alarms. Which, of course, scared the dickens out of everyone. Then he made an appointment to come to your house, where he sold you $2,000 worth of fire alarms. I do not personally like this kind of selling. It is defy nightly not for me. Sure, people probably need the product. Maybe he even saved more than a few lives through his EF forts. But he was rich beyond my dreams, and for the life of me I could not figure out why he continued to do this work. Work I would personally find unrewarding. His and Swerr surprised me. He said, I do it because I enjoy it. I love people. I like buying them a good meal. I like saving their lives. Makes me feel like a hero. A man is a fool to do anything other than what he enjoys. Work is where we spend most of our time. If you do not enjoy what you do, you better find something you do enjoy, and quick. Life is too short. I left New Mexico within three months and quit the life insurance business altogether. I went to California to write screenplays. I wrote three and sold one, which was not produced. I struggled financially. Still, that was the best move I ever made. That move led me to where I am today. I didn't stay with screenwriting, but that doesn't matter. I took action. I did something that I wanted to do. Like Robert Frost said, I took the road less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. Had I not come to California in search of a dream, 
I might not have written the screenplays that prepared me to write this book. I might not have met Marilyn. I might not have worked through the pain of my emotional and spiritual lessons. I choose to live authentically. Oh, if I could give you this feeling I have right now, you, too, would choose to live authentically. There is no substitute for finding your success, the road to your destiny. We all have one. It's just a matter of finding it. The road to your success begins with a simple self-directive, have fun. Enjoy your work. Enjoy your play. Play often. Most of us grew up with the concept that we must work hard to succeed. And although it does take EF4 to live your life, it is just as easy to have fun as not. Take time off in the middle of the day. Go to a movie or watch a baseball game. Focus on the things in your work that give you pleasure. Open your heart to the fun all around you. Enjoy yourself. Life is too short. What did Christ say? This life passeth quicker than the twinkling of an eye. Nobody ever expected you to live this life in pain and Ms. ERY. Certainly not God. He wants you to be happy. Thy kingdom come, on earth as it is in heaven. Certainly, heaven is full of joy and happiness. The happier you are, the more prosperous you will be. Wealth will seek you out. Success will call your name. Next to tithing, having fun is the single most important thing you can do to ensure your prosperity. Of course, that does not mean you will have one day of ease followed by another day of ease. You will invariably go through many tests and difficulties in your life. The trick is to know in your heart that whatever happens you are safe and protected. That the creator of the universe did not create you to be a slave. That you are to fulfill a greater purpose. The trick is, regardless of your situation, have some fun. At the very least you can go for a walk, read a book, talk to a friend, paint or throw a party. You can grab a hunk of cheese and a little bread and go have a picnic. Meet a friend and go window shopping, play golf or bridge or write your own book. There is something you want to do. Something you think of as fun that you are not doing now. Do it and watch the value of your estate rise. If tithing is the heart of success, then having fun is the breath that brings your success to life. Have fun in work. Have fun in play. Have fun and become rich beyond your wildest dreams.